Oh, it was surprisingly so great. Welcome into our Bella Early Edition Trendy. Casey along, Mike Giardi from Boston Sports Journal. We have our two Patriots insiders, Tommy Curran and Phil Perry. Guys, I have to admit, I didn't know what to expect. And when they rolled those opening credits with kind of like the goofy, cheesy thing where, you know, Belichick looked like he was talking to Brady, but anyone who has a brain knew he was talking to Drew Blitz. I was like, oh, boy, this is not going to be good. My expectations were blown out of the water. I laughed so hard. I finished it this morning. Couldn't stay up for three plus <laughs> hours. I could have maybe made it a little bit shorter. But it was funny. They, they really nothing other than the Belich or other than the craft thing, Mike. Nothing was held back. What did you think of it? Yeah, it was surprisingly good. I wasn't sure how it was going to go. Uh, I like the fact that it was a real roast. Like we, we've got to this place where you can't. Touch that third rail. They touched the third rail. They threw people on the third rail. They threw people. It was phenomenal. That's yes. the way it's supposed to be. And that's what it was. And, yeah, there were some moments you're like, oh, did he really? Was that? I probably wasn't that. Fun. No, all right. No, that's what it's supposed to be. I love roasts. I, whether it's Don Rickles back in the day, people roasting Frank Sinatra. Nikki Glaser, to me, I've watched her over and over and over again on my phone on roasts. She's one of the funniest people in America, and she kills every time she's on that. So I expected it to be good, but I never expected it to go to the lengths that it did. And Mike talked about third, they danced on the third rail. They break danced <laughs> on the third rail. They, <laughs> really they squirmed around naked <laughs> on the third well. rail. And to me, it's really <laughs> to allow people in America at this juncture in 2024 to be able to think critically and differentiate between real and farce is, is pretty good. And I think that most people seem to have negotiated that seemingly difficult thing. Yeah, but I think part of the reason it was as funny as it was was because they were touching on some things that, that made people genuinely emotional in very different ways over the course of many, many years. And that's part of the reason why, I think for Patriots fans especially, this had to be as entertaining as it was. I mean, like, that was made for Patriots fans. I'm sure there were people across the country who've only seen Bill Belichick a certain way, only seen Tom Brady a certain way. They got a kick out of that. But for Patriots fans especially, you must have heard some of that stuff and said, Oh, they're, they're going there? Yeah. And then to see some of the reactions from Bill Belichick and others, I think that's why you're getting the reaction to this that you're getting today, which is overwhelmingly positive. If you're a Patriots fan, Phil, and you're watching last night and you see the way that Brady and Bill are interacting and you sort of hear the jokes from Bledsoe at the beginning to Brady at the end, do you sort of finally feel maybe a sense of closure before they move on to an entirely new regime? I guess so. I didn't think of it that way. I do look at it this way, though, where, you know, the saying is comedy is tragedy plus time, right? That, not that anything that happened here in New England was, was quote unquote tragic, but there were, again, there were things that genuinely rubbed people the wrong way. Of course, there were things that were tragic that happened here in New England. Don't get me wrong. And, and that was part of the part of the third rail dancing <laughs> that happened last night. But whether it's Alex Guerrero, Jimmy Garoppolo got to mention how players were treated behind the scenes, who was more responsible for all the winning. These are things that, that genuinely were emotional topics for a long period of time. And they hit on them, Tom. Yep. And that, I think, does maybe give if not them, maybe New England fans, some sense of closure. I think fans need it more because this is about the sixth episode of closure <laughs> that we have seen between Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. And I think the first was in September of 2021 when the Bucks played the Patriots and they spent 25 minutes together in the locker room. I remember sitting on the set over there. Uh, they buried the hatchet. They buried the hatchet when Tom was in the front seat of his car crying about the things that Bill had done for him. They have buried the hatchet innumerable times when Bill has talked about Tom. And I think even in that Apple TV series, The Dynasty, when Brady said it was perfect. It was perfect. I think that really underscores, yeah, there were a lot of eggs broken to make that particular beautiful omelet. But they're past it because of what they did together. It's like we argue, we fight, and we're all fine together. It's perfect. It's perfect. Belichick, as we saw, guys, all night, huge smile on his face, laughing at all the jokes, did not seem thrilled, Giardi, to be up there at that moment. He didn't even look at him until, no. like, the very end, and we never actually saw him take the shot. I, I mean, it, I don't know if he threw it I, over his shoulder. I, you know what, though, to be fair, we didn't see him take the shot a little bit earlier yeah, with yeah, I mean, Gronk and, and Brady yeah. when Gronk, Gronk did it either. So, yeah. But it was definitely frosty, like, yeah, and it's hard not to be. Like, he, when Bill comes out, the first joke is about the roast of me and the, and the Apple Plus episodes, the ten. Like, like, he's felt it, he's, he yeah. sees it, he's heard it, and, and he's had people to whisper in his ear about it. Yeah, go along to get along to a point. And I think that you could see that with, with Belichick. And Robert, God bless him, great owner, great humanitarian. 
but sometimes you have to tamp it down. Mm. And he didn't have to lean into the mic and talk about the greatest coach of all time and the beautiful. He got fired three months ago. You said you didn't want him to work here anymore. So that stuff has to ring hollow to Bill, who I, you know, generally speaking, is a very genuine, actual, real person and doesn't like the, as you see with the sweatshirts on the sidelines, window dressing and falsity. And you can go up there, Robert and Bill can to clink and toast. You don't need the words. And I think the words are probably like, Bill's like, I'm, I'm not working right now. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not enough time has passed from that tragedy. They had the Apple yes. docuseries yes. for that to be a comedic kind of moment. So I, I'm with you guys. That, that felt like the most, of a lot of uncomfortable moments, that was probably the most awkward is how I would describe it. There were a lot of uncomfortable moments and a lot of things you guys talked about, all the third rails. And they hit some things with Tom Brady where my mouth dropped. I was like, oh, they went there. Why do you think he did this in the first place, Tom? Money. Oh. Money and humanizing. Uh, if you looked at the end of the program when they rolled the credits, had 199 Productions, which is, I believe, his production company. It's his draft position. And I think we'll probably get to the craft stuff a little bit, but I think a lot of the, there was a reference made to asking players, Tom asking players to come. And I would imagine that Robert Kraft said, how bad am I going to get it at this thing? If I'm there and I have a bunch of massage jokes, it's going to be very uncomfortable for me. And Brady probably said, well, it could be worse if you're not there. I'll see what I can do to tamp it down. I, I really believe that Brady was probably persuasive in convincing people to come and craft to come. But I think in the end, it was money and humanizing. Money, and I wonder if there's any sort of, you know, approval rating points that he gets from doing this. You always look like a more sympathetic person when you do something like this. He's got Brady brand $1,000 sweatshirts to sell, and he's about to be a very, even more, public face doing the broadcast thing. Maybe he feels like this sort of softens the landing in a new profession for him. I didn't think it was that great, though. Like, even some of the, like, all right, you take the stuff and there's going to be times you're going to grimace. I didn't really like that joke or whatever. But, like, when he was actually at the end, it's kind of wooden. He had the one good joke about the ring, which, again, people are writing these things for you, right? I mean, you give them some information, they write the jokes for you. But I didn't think he came across all that great at the end. He, he looked kind of wooden and, like, that's... Yeah, especially coming off Peyton Manning. Yeah. Like... And, and Peyton's been doing it forever. Yeah, yeah. And, and I thought Brady was, was funny. I think what was interesting about his session up there is... He did a heel turn. He embraced being the greatest <laughs> yes. of all time, which I think was kind of, you know, inspired whoever had the idea. Tom, just embrace being the best of all time and act like you are completely full of yourself. And he was happy to do it.